I don't only live once, I live twice. Yeah. So of course this journey of mine, I've really learned a lot of things, uh, so much incredible things about life. Mm -hmm. And this incredible period of mine as well, uh, to really see that the end of YOLO is regret. A life lived in YOLO is meaningless and just no point, there's no point uh, in YOLO. That's why I tell people, like, that's why I want to start this new thing. Go in YOLO, you go in YOLO. Uh. But, you don't, but yours not, tea, your T is not twice, uh, I don't want you to get left, sir. Uh. Maybe your T is to treasure, to treasure your lives. The one life that you only get. How you can do that is really by serving, by living meaningfully, uh, by spending each moment carefully. Like if you got, what, left 10 bucks in your wallet, you won't have spent, alright? You spend it wisely, carefully. And did you know, you probably know already, time is even more valuable than money. How are you spending that time? So today, we're starting with Grayson, right? We literally hope to encourage and inspire you. Uh, to, this is how he wants to spend his life being fully, right? Serving you. So I hope you enjoy yourself. And please give it up for... For Grayson? Oh yeah, for no, Grayson. <laughs> sorry, sorry, a bit, a bit on. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. So, yeah, today, uh, I want to introduce actually Yi Ping, I'm, I'm Yi Ping. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about yeah, mm -hmm. as well, right? Um, so my name is Yi Ping. Um, I'm not part of the Yacht movement, but I think personally, I think this is a very wonderful movement. Um, before today's event, I had um, the chance to speak with Jason and got to learn about his story. And I spoken briefly with Jason as well. Um, so a little bit about myself. Uh, I am a senior youth worker. Uh, I come from this place called CHAT, which is the uh, Community Health Assessment Team. Our heart is just next door. And in case you're wondering uh, what we do and why I'm involved, so, yeah, um, me and Mason, so, please yes, enjoy. Yes, Thank you. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Come, Mason, no. just have a seat first. <laughs> we wanted it to be very informal, so after I speak, I'll sit down as well. But just a quick uh, spill about what chat is. Uh, I am one of the mental health care professionals uh, who help and support young people 16 to 30 years old. And like I mentioned, our heart is just next door. Uh, we have a triple A model where we want to raise awareness of youth mental health concerns. Um, we want to improve access to mental health resources and that's why our heart is just in Orchard and next door, very highly accessible. And we offer a free and confidential mental health check for those aged 16 and 30. Uh, if you get to hear from Rayson later on and eventually from Jason as well, um, I think their stories are just uh, examples of how life can be very difficult and how challenges can just, you know, in a split second be right in your face without uh, much of your preparation. Uh, same for young people who face uh, mental health concerns. You know, whether you go through accidents, whether you go through very difficult um, life environment, family environment, I think um, our circumstances do affect our mental health. And I think by being involved in today's uh, treasure um, talk, uh, it's also for us to sort of share with you and you know, if you know of someone young who is going through a difficult phase uh, at the present moment, uh, perhaps you want to consider chat and see how we can help out that young person. Alright, so I'm just going to skip this. Um, now, just, just to chat, I, I think when you sign up for this particular talk, um, I, I guess the title that was used was <laughs> Resilience, right? Um, anyone knows what resilience is all about? Any keywords that comes to your mind when you think about resilience? Overcome. Overcome? Overcome what? Struggles. Struggles, yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, I brought with me some definition, um, and hopefully a simple enough definition, yeah? Uh, so it's not just about overcoming, but it's also the ability to become stronger, healthier, or even more successful after something that happens in your life, right? Um, and I decided to borrow Tigger. <coughs> you know Tigger from uh, Winnie the Pooh group? Yeah. This is what Tigger thinks about resilience. Um, that life is really not about how fast you run or how high you climb, but really how well you rise. It doesn't matter where you are at every point in your life, right? And I think in today's, hopefully with a recent story, is to, is to showcase to you um, how you can bounce back from setbacks failures, if you want to call that. Um, 
And really, today I want to have a uh, reason to have a bit more time so that you can hear from his story and hopefully you get to learn from him as well and be inspired and perhaps you get an idea or so that you can apply to your current situation as well. And uh, maybe after his sharing, we can spend a few moments where we can interact as a big group. Alright, so I'm just going to stop talking here and pass the time to Rayson. It's really my honor and pleasure to have all of you guys here tonight, and yeah, it's, it's I'm really grateful for that. And, to, and okay, and tonight, right? Thank you. Tonight I'll be sharing about this thing called Ray of Hope. All right. So what I'm going to share is basically okay. So what I'm going to share about is basically about this journey of what I went through in my life, the obstacles that I faced in my life, and how I overcame it, and I believe you'll be enlightened by it, all right? So I, as you can see from this photo, am a psychiatric nurse, okay, in practice. And also at the same time, I'm a caregiver for a mentally ill mother, okay? And Just a quick question. Does any one of you have ever seen or known of anyone who's suffering from these signs and symptoms, such as hearing voices when they're alone, or even believing that someone is trying to harm you or casting black magic spells on you when it's not the truth? Anyone? Okay, all right. Okay, good, thank you. Okay, so, one thing is, this is what my mom suffers from. And these are the signs and symptoms of schizophrenia. So in my, in my own opinion, I believe mental illness is just like any other illness, like dementia, diabetes even, even though they are affecting different parts of the body, but they are just illness. They are not, um, they are not like uh, evil possessions or anything like that. And one thing, I believe is that instead of stigmatizing them, why not embrace them and support them as well? So that's why I'm here tonight. Okay, I'm going to show you the light. Okay, I'm going to let you know that throughout your life, okay, you're not alone. You're not alone. Is I'm not saying that there's people from Mars coming down to invade us. No, I'm not talking about that. What I'm sharing about is that everyone are facing problems. You, me, everybody in this room or anyone out there are facing issues, facing problems, be it family problems, be it relationship problems, be it work problems, any type of problems as well. So that's why I would like to guide you through this dark tunnel, which I believe sometimes in our life we will be very confused. We do not know what to do. That's why we need the light out of that dark hole. So, this is me when I was seven years old. Don't I look cute and adorable? <laughs> no, just kidding. All right. Okay. So basically, what I can remember is this was very vividly is that when I was seven years old, I was actually going to uh, going out with my dad to buy my mom's favorite chicken rice. And apparently my mom told us that she's going on the way back home. She just entered work and she's coming back. But we waited for an hour and another hour. She didn't turn up at home. She didn't come back at all. At first I thought maybe, you know, it's a jam. So my dad was trying to reassure me, telling me, hey, you know what? Uh, most probably it's due to the jam. No worries. But we kept waiting all the way until 11 p.m. There's no sign of her. And after that, my dad tried to call her. And you know what? The Singtel operator actually said, sorry, the number you just dialed is not available. Please try again later. So after hearing that, I was very sad. I was very worried. I have no idea what, what is going on. I, I was thinking that, hey, maybe mommy, you know, uh, is going to be late, just late, late, but I didn't expect her not to come back at all. 
And my dad back then was working as a security guard, so he had to actually um, request for an off just to look after me and, and to ensure that I'm safe at home. And the next day, we went around the neighborhood just to look for her. We went to the neighborhood, we went to her favorite places, we went to her workplace. But apparently, even her family were telling us that they do not know where she went. Her family didn't help us. So my dad had to actually bring me to the police station to actually lodge a report of a missing person. And at that time, I have no idea what was going on. All I know is I was just going through the motion. Uh, I have no idea that it's going to be so serious. And a month after that, you know, we actually tried searching for her, tried putting out uh, leaflets and everything, and still there's no sign of her. And we thought maybe she went for a vacation, but apparently it's not that case. Because during that month, my dad received a letter from my mom. And that was the letter that made him crumble. Do you want to make a guess what that letter was? Anyone? <laughs> no? Okay, so basically, that letter was this, a divorce letter. My dad received a divorce letter from her and my dad was shocked because he has never done anything wrong towards her. He has not uh, cheated on her. He has not even uh, gambled and then lost all the money. No, he didn't. But one thing was, something was amiss. My dad realized that, hey, maybe my mom was having a relapse. So immediately the next day, he brought me to my principal's office and requested for an hour release, an hour earlier of release back, to, back from my school. So I was like, uh, I have no idea what was going on, but that was also the fir very first time that I actually saw my dad cry. Like literally, I've not seen any man cry before, and this was the first time I saw my dad break, broke down in tears in front of the principal and requesting for help and requesting for for the early release. And I'm grateful that it was granted, but that's not just the case because after that early release, I was actually bullied almost every week. I was bullied almost every week because of that. And they would even hide my bags in the rubbish bin. They would even throw my pencil case and whatever, you know, that, that would be done. And they even, to the extent, they called me motherless. Okay, that, that was the time that I was really down. And I slowly developed low self-esteem after that. And, and after that, you know, I, I, my, my, my dad received another bad news, which was a month after the whole divorce. Okay? The, after the whole divorce, my paternal grandmother passed away as well. So it's like a double blow for my dad and for me as well. So we were very much affected, especially my dad. He had no much, not much of a support except for his, one or two of his best friends, he had some of our family members but not from my mom's side. So we were all shattered. We were, did not know what to do. And, and, and I, I realized that, you know, and I realized that, you know, through all these experiences, my dad taught me one thing, and that is tough times don't last, but tough people do. So I'm really grateful that my dad, you know, all, out of all these years, you know, of taking care of me, supporting me, he actually made it. He actually brought me up to who I am today. And I'm really grateful that, even though he's not here tonight, but I'm really grateful that, you know, he has done his part. And I also learned one thing, and that is, a father's love is one of life's greatest gifts. Be it mother, it's also a great gift as well, but for me, Mine wasn't really much mother, but it's more about my dad.
that has stood by me all this while, protecting me and helping me along the way in my journey of life. So yeah, I, I, I was, um, I, I, would, I would say this is what I've learned throughout my life in terms of what my dad has done for me. And now, let's fast forward to 2014. And 2014, the first, first part of 2014 was a disastrous year for me. Do you, do you know what is it? Why is it? It's because I was actually literally, like what this state, I was fired. Not my dad, but I was fired okay, as a nurse in a Japanese clinic. Okay? I, was, I was literally fired because of inexperience. I have no idea um, why you know, um, uh, I would make such silly mistakes in the past. And yeah, I, I made a bad choice because I thought coming out of uh, army and I'm fresh grad, you know, I have the whole world in my hands. I could go anywhere I want in terms of hospital because I, I took nursing, right? So I thought, hey, you know what? I can go, go through this, but damn, that's not the, the way. I lost, I, I was lost because after being fired, two weeks later, my ex-girlfriend, my uh, okay, ex-girlfriend broke up with me and I was pretty lost plus I was dropped down to the bottom. I was like, literally do not know what to do. But one thing is, deep down in me, I knew that, hey, life still has to go on because I want to fulfill my purpose of giving back to my father, my father and my mom. I want to take care of them. And also at the same time, even though I know my studies kind of suck in terms of my GPA and everything, <laughs> okay? But, you know, I, I, I wouldn't want to be a useless bum. I want to do something great for my family as well. And even though my father is not an entrepreneur or anything, but I want people to know that, hey, I'm from the Chu family and you know, I have something that I'm building and that is a legacy, so which I'll share a bit later on. And yeah, and I, I, was, I was like literally lost, but thank God that you know, I didn't give up. Because if I were to give up, I wouldn't be here sharing my story. Am I right to say that? Yeah, if I, if I were to take the leap of faith off the ledge, okay, I would have been one of the casualty that died in the, under the HDB void deck, right? So yeah, I, I had thoughts of killing myself before. Uh, I mean, not in 2014, but way, way younger. Yeah, but then again, I did not give up. So if let's say you guys are having, facing any problems right now, remember to not give up, all right? And this is what I've learned in my life as well, and that is failure is feedback to success. Meaning to say that failure, whenever you, you have failures, right, you will learn that it's not going to be the end. It's going to be something that's going to propel you towards your success. And true and behold, I actually learned the hard way. I literally learned from the hard way because there's one time that um, I actually lost this job, so I went to this agency nursing where I go to different uh, go to Tantoxing, okay, hospital to actually push the patients to their respective wards and even to the extent of like just checking their blood pressure and etc. So I was like starting from scratch again, and then I was given this chance to actually give, go to school to talk. Um, because I, I actually wanted to uh, be a coach ever since I saw this advertisement while watching a movie with my friend. And this coaching advertisement made my heart and my mind tick. It just made, made us tick. And, and apparently, my friend, after I, I went, went back home, I went to do a you know, browse through Facebook, and I happened to see my ex-secondary schoolmate, who used to be a top, who used to be a bad boy in school, and he actually was teaching, was coaching students in his display picture. 
So I actually asked him, hey, how do you get this opportunity? So he actually referred me to this guy called David King. So David King was, is a motivational speaker and he goes to schools to talk as well. So he's something like Adam Koo. So he actually taught me that failure is feedback to success. He was the one who taught me not to give up in life. He was the one who brought me to schools to actually watch and learn how he conduct workshops, watch and learn how he actually interact with students, how he actually empower them and motivate them as well. And that's why you know, I was able to be going to different schools to talk. So I've not just been to Northfield, I've been to Dublin Secondary, I've been to Serangoon, I've been to many other schools to talk, and I'm really grateful that I've been given this opportunity as well. So this is also one of the students from Dublin Secondary that I actually coached before. So yeah, and, and one thing is, in life, no matter how successful a person could be, you know, he or she will definitely have obstacles along the way as well. Am I right to say that? Yeah? So, this current problem that I have is that like late last year, uh, before I actually went for my advanced diploma in nursing mental health, my mom's relative, in terms of her family members, her sisters, actually met me up at my mom's point there. And they actually told me one thing, you know, hey, uh, reason, since you are already working and you are working in this profession in mental health nursing, we would like to tell you that because we are very busy and everything, we can't help you and your mom anymore, we can't assist you, we can't support you anymore. So they actually pass me the baton. They pass it to me and I have to be 100% responsible for my mom. And yeah, I, 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 I was, um, I was taken aback, like literally, because I, I didn't expect this. Even though I, I, I thought that you know they would be helping me uh, in, in a fair bit, you know, so that I wouldn't get caregiver burnout. But uh, that wasn't the fact. They they actually passed everything to me. But I'm grateful that I didn't give up. If, as much as they, my mom, okay, as much as my mom is not you know receptive about her mental illness for the past 20 to 30 years, I've been doing my best to learn how to communicate with her. So I actually took joint IMH to work after that. So I actually left coaching for a while and then I went to IMH to work and to actually learn more about my mom's diagnosis, more about her signs and symptoms, and more about how to actually relate to her, how to talk to her, her in terms of her level, rather than talk to my, in terms of my level, rather than always quarreling with her, I, I want to know more, so I actually learned, and then I also at the same time educated her about medical education compliance, which she is not very, very compliant, um, unfortunately, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I took this leap of faith to join IMH in 2014 just to actually be there for her, and yeah, and, and even though it's not just financially, I'm, I'm helping her, I'm helping her emotionally in, in terms of reassuring her and letting her know that, hey, uh, because she has this symptom of hoarding, so hoarding means keeping whatever things like Garanguni men, so they will keep, 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 and also at the same time, she will be changing jobs every now and then um, and because of her illness and she doesn't want to, to get treated sometimes. So yeah, I... I, I, I still tell myself that hey, I'll do my best, you know, as a son, okay, as a son, she's my mom, I have to be there for her, I can't give up on her like any other patients that's, that's in IMH as well, so I want to be there for her, I want to be there, not just, you know, oh, I have a, have a, a limelight for myself, for my story, no, that's not the case, but for me, as I really want to help her, I want to be there for her, I want to let her know that, hey, you know, no matter how many people has given up on you, no matter how many people stigmatize you, I'll still be there for you. So, so yeah, if I were to quit, you know, my life, if I were to give up on my life, I wouldn't have been on newspaper article. I wouldn't have been on Nitrate Life. I wouldn't have been on podcasts. I wouldn't be sharing my story to so many amazing people like you, okay? 
And yeah, if I were to not treasure myself or treasure my opportunities, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here talking, I wouldn't be on newspaper as well and any other platforms that's in the near future. So yeah, and these are my friends and I call them my family as well because I believe family, we can choose our friends but not our family. We can choose our friends but not our family. So if I were to choose to be with the gangs, I wouldn't be here, right? I wouldn't be here sharing as well. And one thing is, as much as we, we want to you know, choose our family and friends, one thing is treasure the bonds that you have with them. Treasure the moments, treasure the memories. Be it you have negative situations with them, like emotions lying around because you, you guys quarreled or anything, but hey, you only have one life to live. You're going to live one time as you. Nobody's going to live as you. I can't 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 live as anyone else. But hey, one thing is, we're going to cher cherish the people. We're going to treasure them as much as we can. We're going to treasure our family members, our friends. We're going to treasure the people that's around us. Right? And yeah, and I'm grateful that, that I met all these people. They are entrepreneurs, they are uh, motivational speakers, they